Director of Holy Spirit Interactive, and we're here to guide you into leading praise and worship. And even though this session is essentially for beginners, those who are doing this for the first time, the principles that we're going to teach you over here are applicable to everybody. What we're going to do is take you through a sequence of praise and worship that you can do in any surrounding with any group of people. And we're going to explain to you why we do certain things. We begin usually any prayer session with a session of praise where we kind of open our hearts to Jesus, open our minds to Him. And the reason we do this is because very often when we come to prayer, we're distracted. We're distracted by the things of this world. We have 101 things vying for our attention. But when we open our mouths and we sing loudly songs of praise to God, we kind of get out of ourselves and we get into the heart of God. The beauty about coming into the house of God is the fact that whenever you come into his presence, the first thing you need to do is praise him. And that's exactly what we're going to do as we take our first song, very simple, called Praise Him. Thanking God is usually a good way to continue our session of praise and worship because we need to be people of gratitude. And why not? God, after all, does so many things for us. And when we acknowledge the things that he has done, it is only right that we do so. So after a session of praise and worship, we lead into a couple of songs of thanksgiving, recalling to mind all the blessings that God has showered upon us and those we love over the past few hours. And sing a song of thanksgiving such as this one.
one of the things that we need to be most grateful for in our lives is the sacrifice that God our Father made for us. He loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son that whoever might believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. And truly we need to be grateful for this. It should have been us who died on that cross. It should have been us who went through that passion that preceded his death on the cross. But instead he took our place and died so that we might live. I don't know about you, but whenever I think of this, it fills my heart with immense sorrow for the things that I've done that made it necessary for Jesus to die for me, which brings me to a heartfelt repentance and a determination that even as I say sorry for all the things that I've done, I promise never to repeat them again. If we only go through our lives since the last time we stood face to face with God and see the things that we've done again to hurt Him, especially by hurting those around us. There are many things that we need to say sorry to God for. And now might be a good opportunity to do that as we tell God, God, sorry, forgive me. been forgiven, it is bound upon us to forgive those who have hurt us pain. And Jesus himself says, for if you forgive men their sins, your heavenly Father will forgive your sins. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your heavenly Father will not forgive your sins. And it is only right that at a time like this, having accepted God's forgiveness, we extend this same forgiveness to others. And even as we forgive, the hurt that is there within our hearts will be washed away by the living water. The Holy Spirit, when we say, come, come and bring healing to our hearts. Come and bring healing to our minds. Come and bring healing to our spirits, our souls, and even our bodies. Living water, flow on. Sweep away my pain. Bring your healing to my heart. And help me love once again.
is about this time that you will notice that you truly are coming to the heart of worship. And I don't know if you realized it, but there are a few things that I've done ever since I started this. One is to cue you in on the words of the songs, assuming that you don't know it. Now, there are different ways of cueing people, and one of the things we suggest is not to give people papers that they can read from, because that detracts from the worship. You have the rustling of paper, you have people looking at things, when what you really want to do is for them to lose themselves in the heart of worship. Prior to losing themselves in the heart of worship, it is a good idea to surrender ourselves to God, surrender to Him our minds, our hearts, our lives. There's not a single one of us without problems, unfortunately. But at times like this, we can give our problems to Jesus, knowing that He's bigger than them. And if we give them to Him truly, let, letting go of the things that bind us, He will set us free. He will take care and liberate us. So let us surrender our lives to God now, everything in it. And it is such a time that we can invite God to truly work His will in our lives by pouring His Spirit out into us. And as we receive His Spirit, truly opening our hearts, opening our minds, opening our lives to Him, He comes in and truly has His way in us because we're giving Him the control. We're handing the reins over to Him and says, Lord, everything that is ours is Yours. Run it. Run my life. Do your will in it. Let your kingdom come just as we pray. And let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us welcome the Holy Spirit now, truly, truly with, from the depths of our being, say, come Lord.
presence. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. Live inside of us. Live inside of us. Say that again. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Presence, Lord. We are in your Fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. And live inside of us. Live inside of us. You are the living water. You are the living water. You're the never drying fountain. Comfort and counselor. draws us to you, Father. And we're happy to come. There is nothing that separates us. There is no unrepented sin in my heart. There is no unforgiveness there either. I have surrendered myself to the best of my ability. And I approach the throne of grace with the confidence that comes from knowing that we are one. We want to feel your love, Lord. We want to soar up in the heavens with you. We want to feel your embrace around us. And Lord, I come to you. Lord, I come to you knowing that your grace is sufficient for me. And this is what is going to make all the changes take place in my life. I come to you as I am, having done the best I could, knowing that you will complete and do the rest. So Lord, let my heart be changed renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. Lord, I've come to know the weaknesses I see in me will be stripped away, not by my strength, not by my power, but by the power of your love. So Lord, hold me close. Hold me close, let your love surround me. Bring me near, draw me to your side. And as I wait, as I wait, let me soar up towards you, Lord, on the wings of eagles, knowing that I can be right with you in heaven. Lord, I come to you.
so with you. Your spirit leads me on.
should be blessed too. I pray that when you pray, you pray from your heart with passion and sincerity, honesty and humility. And people will see that in you, but more than people, God will see that in you. And the anointing that follows will truly be tremendous. <laughs> 